Welcome! Today we are going into some basic principles of Arduino Nano Board. Most of these principles are also applicable to other Arduino boards. First off, we want to see how we can read in output of devices. Like in this case I have a potentiometer here and it is connected to the A3 pin. It's the analog 3 pin of the board. This is a very basic setup which only shows how to read in input. The code for this example will be given here. As you can see, we read in, uh, we define the analog pin A3 as the one we want to read in. In the setup, we set this pin to an input mode. This is very important if you have set it to output previously because if you don't change it, it will give you very weird readings. Next, we read in the analog output uh, input, and then we print it to the serial monitor. Now as you can see, the power goes to the red line, the blue line is the ground, the potentiometer is connected to ground and power respectively, and the output is connected to A3. This is very easy. Now let's open up the serial monitor of our Arduino IDE. As we can see it is putting out 524. Now what is uh, in the middle of it? Because this uh, potentiometer is based is put to a very neutral level. Now I will turn it up a bit and we can see that the number is rising as I turn it. Okay, I stop turning it now and it's 963. Now I'll turn it to the right direction which diminishes the output. As you can see the number drops and drops and they can go it, they get it to go to zero Totally, and the other side it is 1023. So, we can use this to read out the output of various devices which we connect to our Arduino. Let's try something different now. Now we will build a very basic cap capacitance meter. I already have the sketch. On here, as you can see, this is an open Arduino project, and you can find the link in the description. The sketch is over here. I will uh, yeah. sketch is over here, and it is not very hard to put it onto the breadboard. So as you can see, there's a resistor charging up the capacitor, and there's also a possibility to discharge the capacitor. In real life this looks like this. We see that the capacitor is connected to pin 5 of our board and pin 4 is also connected to the capacitor over two resistors. Now I didn't have a 220 ohm resistor so I just put two 100 ohm resistors in series as you can see here. Also, the ground of the board is still connected to the blue line and there is a ground connection to the capacitor. Note that most capacitors, or at least electrolytic capacitors, should not be put in, in the wrong direction. Usually, you will have a line like this on your capacitor. Also, there is a dent in this capacitor's head which goes to the positive side in this case and this the other side is the negative side. So keep that in mind when working with capacitors. Now let's look at the sketch. I've taken the sketch from the website and adapted it to our means. I'm still using the pin A3 in this example to read out the analog data on the capacitor. I charge with five, uh, pin 5 and I discharge with pin 4 
and the resistor value I used is 10,000 ohms so 10 kilo ohms what this circuit does is loading up the capacitor in such a way that uh, it measures the time as well we know that the time to charge up a capacitor is measured in time constants in one time constant the capacitor becomes charged for 63% of its maximum charge. We also know the output value of our voltage. So after one time constant we have 63% we have of our maximum voltage which corresponds to about 640 readout value on the analog input read. So what we do is we put the output pin high and charge the capacitor and read out the voltage at the capacitor. When it reaches 63% of the maximum voltage we stop the time. At this point we have one time constant of time. So how long is the time constant in our circuit? That depends on the resistor and the capacitor. Generally you can say one time constant is the resistor times the capacitance of the circuit. So in our case we have 10 kilo ohms and the 470 microfarad capacitor. We multiply these values to get to a value of 0.47 seconds. So after 0.47 seconds we should be able to read out the 63% of our maximum voltage. Now since the sketch knows how much uh, how high the resistance of a resistor is, we can ca use this to calculate the capacitance of the capacitor. We can use this to test our different capacitors we found in the teardown projects. So let's try it out. And here we go. The reading is about 383 microfarads for a 470 mic. No. Actually, I think this is a 10 microfarad capacitor. Let's see. Yes, it's a 10 microfarad capacitor. The reading is way off. Now this is very interesting. I will try some other capacitor and do it again. I assume that because of the reading there is also some ground work going on and it takes a bit longer to charge up the capacitor and because this is only 1k ohm resistance the time window for the loading is actually quite low. It is at uh, 0.047 seconds and when there's also the thing with the cycle the Arduino only runs at about 16 megahertz so we get some measuring errors over here as well so we should try a higher resistor I have a 33k ohm over here I will try this now and let's see if the readings become more probable now where is the mistake I've made? I already had the 33k, uh, 33K uh, resistor in place and this is actually 1k resistor so the wrong readings are obviously due to the, low, uh, to the higher resistor and the wrong code. So let's change that. I used the 33k resistor at this place to charge up the capacitor so that the time constant is bigger. With a bigger time constant the measuring errors become smaller. Let's now try out our tool. We open the serial monitor and it will start measuring. And it is measuring about 11 microfarads which is very good because we have a 10 microfarad capacitor in place. So we see this is exactly what we expected it has a bit higher capacitance but this is still very good. Now I will check up all of my capacitors that I salvaged in several other projects and then we will 
probably get to building something very cool. See you then. Now that we can read and write with the Arduino board, we can go on to bigger projects. We will see next a serial connection to a Wi-Fi board, which I will be doing in the next video. I hope you will be watching. Thanks and goodbye.